TroopResource.org, trying to put a thousand skills into every troop's backpack. Okay, so welcome everybody to the Troop Resource Show. Tonight's topic is going to be the uh, Merit Badge College. And of course, we have with us today, Randy, the man, Hardy. Say hi, Randy. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? And we have Steve Perrone. How do? Who is really uh, the man in charge of this uh, huge, huge effort. And I'm your host, Scott Newman. So, uh, that said, let's talk a little bit about Merit Badge College and tell us what it is and where it is and when it is and all that kind of good stuff. Well, Merit Badge College is an opportunity for scouts to earn merit badges in a setting that is a little different than they're used to. We're on a, uh, a middle school campus. It's the uh, Perkyoman Valley East Middle School in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. How and appropriate, Collegeville. There you go. And Merit Badge College and College. Am I interrupting you, Steve? I'm no, sorry. Not, not at all. I'm sorry to, to ruin your train of thought there. And it's just a great opportunity, other than summer camp or working one-on-one -on -one with a counselor for scouts to earn badges. <clears throat> kind of takes the, uh, the pressure off scouts who maybe haven't been able to get to a summer camp. Maybe they missed it, they were ill, whatever. Or, and it also gives them the opportunity to do other things, to experience other things at summer camp, other than just earning merit badges. So. Uh, we're happy to do this, provide them with the opportunity to earn that. That's badges. a great idea. I never thought of it as operating in the reverse of take your badges at Merit Badge and you can do the extracurricular things at summer camp. That's a fantastic idea. Yeah, scouts go to school <clears throat> all year. Summer should be some downtime for them, having fun. Yeah, I know that uh, Troop 512, we've gone to some summer camps where we've told the scouts, just take your badges during the morning. And in the afternoons, we'll do biking and hiking and swimming and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So that's really an awesome idea. Yeah. So this, this uh, year, we're having two weeks, as we normally do, two Saturdays. It's May the 4th and May the 11th. And this year, just because of some difficulties we had in getting a, uh, a host school uh, where we could uh, run the college, we're back-to-back -back weekends, May 4th and May 11th. Normally, we have a little more space in between the uh, the two Saturdays, but we're going to see how this works out. It may end up better. I was wondering about that, actually, because... <laughs> it may end up better. <laughs> it may, yes, it may, yeah. Uh, because that means that sort of more requirements have to be done either prior to Merit Badge College or after Merit Badge College. There's not nearly as much time in between the classes for the scouts to get the extra requirements done. Yeah. Well, almost every merit badge has pre-requirements that they need to do before the first week. And those pre-requirements have been listed on the Creative Liberty website for, well, since December. So they've had pretty, they've had a lot of time to look and kind of see what badges that we were offering and what their pre-requirements are. And if they were serious, they should be completing them now. Actually, one of the badges, uh, uh, personal management, requires you to start by February 1st <laughs> in order to, you have to keep track of your income and expenses for three months. So in order to earn the badge, they've got to start working now on that one requirement. That's right. But there's a lot of other badges that have pre-requirements that scouts should really be careful that they review the pre-requirements before they pick the badge. For example, first aid. You have to have completed all of the requirements, tender foot, second class, first class, for first aid in your scout handbook prior to taking the first aid merit hmm. badge. I didn't know that. I knew they had to take some other merit badge before first aid, didn't they? Or first aid before some other merit yeah, badge? Yes, first aid <coughs> before... Um, emergency prep? Emergency prep. Yes, emergency <coughs> prep requires you to have completed first aid prior to uh, taking the badge. And there's some other badges that have some interesting pre-requirements too. So please review the pre-requirements prior to selecting your classes. <laughs> cool. Mm. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you got the idea for Merit Badge College and, and how it all works. Well, about six or seven years ago, seven or eight years ago, um, our scouts in Troop 512, 
attended Amara Badge College at the uh, Omarva Council in Newark. And it was very well run. It was a large event. And we did it two years. And the first year I was just stunned <coughs> at the amount of work that, uh, you know, that they had put into organizing it. And I, I just couldn't imagine the efforts that they, that they had uh, put into it. And then the second year I, I studied a little further and I actually saw a couple things that troubled me a little bit, and um, I thought that maybe we could learn from what they did, and we could we could replicate it as as best we could. So I contacted their people that had that were running it, and I got some ideas from them, and you know we made some tweaks, made it our own, and in our very first year, uh, I think we offered uh, three hundred slots. <laughs> I remember this, and. Um, you know, it took us about three weeks to fill it up because it was brand new. People didn't know what it was, and what was involved, and uh, you know, we thought we were doing great because we sold out three hundred spots <laughs> in three weeks. Uh -huh. In three weeks, and the second year, you know, we raised it up to four hundred spots, and I think we sold out in two days. And then the third year, we just went through the roof. We had five hundred slots, and we sold out in three years, and. I mean, in three, three hours, hours three, three years, years <laughs> three hours, and, and then we've just, we've grown and, and we've done the same thing. Uh, word's gotten out. We get scouts from six, eight hours away coming. Wow. This year, I can't wait because certainly with the new Scouts BSA, I know we're going to get young ladies. Ah, I've already been contacted. That's great. So uh, it, it, uh, it will be a great opportunity for our new Scouts BSA females to... Uh, jump right in there head first and earn some merit badges. Matter of fact, I was just talking with someone today who's a scout leader for uh, Scout BSA Girls Troop in Coatesville, um, Troop 111. Okay. And uh, I said, you know, we've got merit badge college coming. She said, yeah, I know. Yeah. So, uh, so that's great. I guess that would probably be Chester County Council. Chester County. And they just, <clears throat> last year, they started a merit badge college copying ours so hmm. and I've heard from numerous other councils over the last several years wanting to know how we do it and uh, we've passed on the good information the more more badge colleges that are out there <coughs> the less pressure it is the easier it'll be for our scouts to be able to register so tell me a little bit about uh, how many counselors you have and classes and things mm -hmm. of that nature okay well um, we have 130 classes. I'm going to look that up to be short. 133 classes that we're offering. Um, it's um, 56 smart badges, including nine eagle badges. Uh, we have a number of STEM badges, and uh, we also offer one of the Nova Awards. Uh, start your engines this year. Each year we offer one Nova Award. Uh, and this year it's start your engines. So honestly, I don't know what's involved in that. It's but ironic because I believe Nova. You said yes. Nova. Yes. <laughs> Nova means no go in Spanish. You do know that, Steve. No, I was no go. Yeah. They actually, Nova. The uh, Chevy who made the Nova yeah. tried to sell it in Mexico, and didn't change the name, and the the sales bombed. Just absolutely bombed. Yeah. That's perfect. <coughs> yeah. That's just perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. So we have 80 counselors teaching those badges, and as of this minute, we have uh, we have filled about three quarters of those slots. So we still need to recruit approximately 20 counselors that will be teaching 34 badges. So if anyone is out there that is interested in perhaps teaching a badge, if you'll drop me a uh, email, s perone p e r r o n e at p p c i g a org. Just send me an email telling me you'd like to uh, teach a class and uh, we'll get you registered and uh, be happy to send you a list of the classes that are still available. Are there any that you're particularly interested in? Uh, I do have a I list think he's here. got all the merit badges he needs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not interested in any. Um, you know, as I, as I look at the list, I think our biggest need actually might be one of the easier badges, art. We need two counselors because we, uh, we have four classes of that. Game design is another tough one to fill. Uh, it's one of the newer badges that might only be out there 
six, seven, eight years, so we don't have a lot of counselors yet for game design, and that is a very <coughs> popular badge. That's one of the first ones that uh, will sell out the scouts. Hmm. Very interested in game design, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of which, let me do a quick uh, promo here for just a second. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who want to teach a merit badge, if you go out to the troopresource.org website, <clears throat> down here in the left-hand menu, we've got merit badge PowerPoint shows. Now, you can get, of course, the merit badge booklets from your scout shop. You can get the merit badge worksheets, which the scout fills out from meritbadge.org. Uh, one of the things that people don't often have, which sort of prevents them from becoming a merit badge counselor, is the PowerPoint shows. So out on troopresource.org, here on this page, we have a number of different merit badge PowerPoints. We've got citizenship in the world, and coin collecting, and communications, and cooking, and energy, and all kinds of things like that. So if you want to be a counselor, and you'd like to teach one of these, we have the PowerPoints already out there for you. And if you're already a counselor and you teach a uh, merit badge and you'd like to share your PowerPoint with us, we'd really like that. Just click this link right here and that will give you the opportunity to upload it to our Dropbox. And then we'll post it here. And this not only serves as something that's a resource for all scout troops uh, across the nation, and actually across the world if you wanted, but it's a great backup for you if you come to Merit Badge College and you have forgotten your thumb drive or something of that nature, you could download it from our site and work right from there. So again, troopresource.org and right here on the left-hand menu is the Merit Badge PowerPoint slide. So. That's my plug for tonight. Okay. And Scott, it's not necessary to use a PowerPoint. It's helpful, you know, it, uh, it's nice uh, visual for the scouts to look at. But a counselor doesn't need to use a PowerPoint to teach uh, a badge. They can certainly do without it. Um, the facility we're going to be at this year is a relatively new school. I, I'd estimate it maybe 10, 12 years old. It's a beautiful, modern facility. All of our classrooms have smart boards, and uh, that's awesome. That means you'll be right in place there with a smart board. I'll be left out. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean that I don't need to bring my projector this year? That means no projectors are needed. Every, okay. Every classroom has a projector. That's awesome. So that's, I always bring it as a backup just in case. You might want to bring an instruction <clears throat> manual. Yeah. If you've never taught in a school and used a smart board before. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a beautiful auditorium with all modern technology that seats 1,500 people. Wow. So we'll have our opening ceremony in there. And we're actually going to have two merit badges taught in that auditorium. In the morning, we're going to have citizenship in the community. And in the afternoon, citizenship in the world. So we have selected our best instructors to teach those two classes. and. You know, our hope is that we get 250 scouts taking those classes. <laughs> lecture it style. should be like college. Just like a college lecture yeah. style. And we have assigned mm -hmm. a couple of extra uh, admin staff to uh, make sure that all our scouts are on their best behavior during those uh, <laughs> classes, as we don't want a distraction for those that are uh, really interested and involved. So uh, anyone out there that's interested or needs one of the citizenships, this is gonna be a marvelous opportunity for you to uh, take those Eagle Required badges. Speaking of which, let me mention something which I read to you early on before the show. I have here an article from the New York Times. Uh, this was written by Thomas L. Friedman, and just an excerpt. And I'm gonna be talking to the scouts in our troop about the importance of citizenship in the community and citizenship in the nation and the world. And here's, here's excerpts from this article. <clears throat> a few years ago, the leaders of the college board, and they're the folks who administer the SAT college entrance exams, they asked themselves a radical question. Of all the skills and knowledge that we test young people for, that we know are correlated with success in college and in life, which is the most important? And their answer 
was the ability to master two codes, computer science and the U.S. Constitution, which I found absolutely amazing. They go on to say their short answer <clears throat> was that if you want to be an empowered citizen in our democracy, able to not only navigate society and its institutions, but also to improve and shape them, and not just be shaped by them. You need to know the code of the U.S. Constitution and how it works. And if you want to be an empowered and adaptive worker, or an artist, or a writer, or a scientist, or a teacher, and be able to shape the world around you and not just be shaped by it, you need to know how computers work and how to shape them. So I think it's fantastic. We're going to try and get as many of these scouts in to sit in the community and sit in the nation because those are really important skills that they're going to have to know uh, in the life uh, yeah. as they grow. There was a nice article <coughs> yesterday on Brian and Scaling uh, talking about merit badges. And uh, every year he publishes the, um, the ranking of the badges, that is, what badge the most scouts took the prior year. And so last year, the top nine badges <coughs> were all Eagle required badges with swimming as number one. I was also interested in, in some of the bottom dwellers though. Uh, bugling, for example. In this whole great country of ours, only 551 scouts earned bugling last year. And bugling is a badge that we offer at Merritt Badge College. <laughs> So of those 551 scouts that earned it last year, 10 earned it at our Marvage <coughs> College, and we're offering it again this year. So if we have any buglers out there, go for that badge, because it's pretty rare. And uh, I'd have to look at the requirements, but I think there's three different <coughs> instruments you can use. Uh, bugle, trumpet, and I think coronet might be the third one. Really? To earn the bugle That's badge. That's interesting. I would expect a something clarinet, like the you know, baritone. Coronet. 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 Right. <coughs> huh. I would have thought the, the baritone, which is the trumpet with a big bell on it. Yeah. But that's neat. That's awesome. Can you do it with the kazoo? Because I can play the kazoo. I'll bet you can. I can play the diggery-doo as well. Can you really play the diggery-doo? I can play the diggery-doo. Have you ever played the diggery-doo? I have played the diggery-doo. I, I, Down I, under where? You're on camera. You might as well wave. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, an interloper. <laughs> so, Scott, I, I understand that you're actually teaching a merit badge uh, course this weekend as well. I am. I'm teaching the personal management merit badge. We're doing it in three, over three weekends, three days for uh, three hours each day. And uh, we're having a guest speaker in, coming in from Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union. And uh, do, you have, do, you, do you have 500 kids coming too? No, I do not have 500 kids coming. We have, oh. we have 10 kids coming. Yeah. yeah. It could be held at the township building. So you're kind of like the community college of Merit Badge. <laughs> <laughs> community colleges are great. They are great, actually. They Delaware are County underrated, they that's are. for certain. Yeah. That is. That you is know, for sure. They're not like when we were. Young. Here's what I understand. Imagine uh, for all you scouts that are looking at different colleges, they're one of the least mm -hmm. expensive, expensive options out there. Yeah. And what they find is that... Teachers are, are often, or professors, are no longer on tenure tracks, so they work at different schools in order to make enough money to live. So an instructor or a professor that might teach at a place like Swarthmore or Westchester or Newman or something like that also teaches the same class at the community college. Yep. So you're getting the same quality professor for a much reduced price. So consider that. Well, so this, this Merit Badge College <coughs> idea has taken off in our council. Uh, this year, for the first time, we had Merit Badge in the park, where um, we offered ten different courses. Sorry, Merit it's like concert park. in the park, right? Yes, yes, exactly. <coughs> well, we, we offered uh, ten different badges at uh, Nakamixon State Park. That's sort of like a dog park, only it's a scout park. Yeah. <laughs> and is that uh, like Shakespeare in the dark? There you go. <laughs> I'm sure it's very similar. They teach the theater merit badge there. Gotcha. <laughs> Educated people call that thespian merit badge. Oh, thespian, thespian. Yeah. So, uh, how do people register? 
Well, we go to the Cradle Liberty uh, website, and uh, registration is on March the 1st at 9 a.m. So oh, at 9 a.m.? It used to be at noon. Yeah, it used to be at noon. Because that's oh, important. It, it, is, it is at noon. You're absolutely right. Okay, because it's important. It's at noon. Yes. And the reason it's important is because it can sell out in three hours. Yeah. So my yeah. advice to people is to go sit on the website at 11.59... And you won't see the website change probably at noon, but unless you hit that refresh button, you hit mm -hmm. refresh and get yourself registered. Yep. So have all your, your uh, courses picked out well in advance, have checked your prerequisites, and have a backup plan so that if by the time you register your class is already filled, mm -hmm. you're going to have a backup class as your second choice. You should hold up the flyer so they can see what all the uh, courses might look like. Now, a little bit higher. Now, when they sign there up... There we go. Awesome. Will they know what teachers are teaching the courses? No, they will not. They will not, because I know a lot of kids <clears throat> were complaining about Mr. Walsh last year, and they said, I, I want to take the courses again, but I don't want to take Mr. Walsh's course. He's just ragging on Barry. That's all. I didn't say... I, Mr. Walsh, I didn't use a first name. You know, I kept it anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I think I think they wanted to avoid Mr. Hardy. That's oh, who they wanted to I avoid. I don't think so. Yeah. I think I got the best reviews. You really? I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, so what are you showing us now there? This uh, is the uh, the actual list of all the classes. And one of the things a scout should do is only schedule one class in each period. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> we have scouts that will select two different classes in the first period. You can only be in one place at a time. So please only select one badge. And we should talk for a second about the number of badges you can take. There are four slots, four classroom slots. So if you want to take four badges, you could conceivably do that. Eagle required badges are two period badges. So you could take two Eagle required badges or one eagle required badge and two non-eagle badges or four uh, non-eagle badges. So you have to do some type of a combination of both of those. So the classes are an hour and 15 minutes each. The <coughs> eagle required then would be uh, two and a half hours. Great. So... They don't have to take four, though, right? No, they can take however many they want. If they want to just take three badges, they might not want to come for the uh, opening. Right, or if they've got a soccer game, you know, in the afternoon, the they can take morning badges and then go out to the soccer yeah. game. And uh, where's it being held this year? Perkyoman Valley Middle School East. It's an awesome school. Yeah, and, and the scouts do have to attend both Saturdays in order to earn the badge. Uh, they'll, uh, they can download the Murr Badge workbook, put all their answers in the workbook. Uh, the, the counselors will be helping them uh, both Saturdays. They may have some work to do in between the two classes, between May 4th and 11th. But uh, if they put in the effort, they'll earn the badge. Awesome. Now, I'm actually going to post the telephone number right up here if we have people that want to call in. Um, and while we're waiting for a caller, if we get one, uh, talk to me about blue cards this year. Okay, that's a little <clears throat> different this year. Uh, we've had some problems with, um, with scouts bringing blue cards. Many times the scouts have forgotten them and they've failed to get their scoutmaster's signature. So we're, we are going to this year for the first time provide all of the blue cards. The scouts do not even need to bring <coughs> blue cards. So hmm. you know, it makes it a little easier for the scouts. We will be supplying the blue cards to the <coughs> counselors so that they'll have them on the very first Saturday. And uh, we'll be giving out all the blue cards on completion uh, the second Saturday, except for the uh, two sits in the auditorium, the two citizenships. If we have 250 scouts, in each class, it wouldn't be possible for the counselor to sign all the blue cards, make sure that everything's been completed. Uh, okay, so I'm teaching movie making this year. Correct. <clears throat> I've got two sessions. Mm -hmm. Again. Uh, yes, again. 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 
I can teach photography as well. That's my favorite. Um, movie making, we actually, the scouts create a movie in class. So mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. And last year, and I'm hoping I can do it again this year, uh, I use a, a software package that's called Vegas. It's made by a company called Magix. And they offered us the educational discount for any of my scouts that took my class that would like to get the package. It was like 75% off list price. So it was an amazing price. So I'm hoping they do that again this year. But as far as blue cards are concerned, then I come in a half an hour early and get my blue cards from you and get yes. my classroom set up? All the counselors will you know, come in and register separately with with us and we'll hand the counselor the blue cards with the roster for uh okay you know their scouts now we will also provide the instructors with their rosters probably 10 12 14 days in advance of the college so that uh if you need to email your scouts anything any further instructions you'll have their names and email and you'll be able to drop them a line and let them know what you're Okay, so I'm going to get a blue card with my 10 students' names on it already and yes. their troop and all of that filled out. Yep. Now, after my class day one, do I fill out the requirements that are completed? I would fill out the requirements that you've completed day one. Okay. And that will make it easier then at the end, at the end of day two to fill out the balance of the ones they've okay. completed. You hand them to the scouts, either complete or a partial, depending on what they have done. Okay. And uh, it's amazing the amount of follow-up we get from the scouts post-college, where they actually then will contact a counselor to complete a badge with oh, only that They did that with me frequently, so yes. especially yeah. for the, I required when I was teaching photography, a photographic uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. And they, I had five or six that would contact me afterwards and say, I want to send you these in an email or in a PowerPoint or something to have me review them. All right, back to the blue cards, though. I, I go off on a tangent. So day two, they finish up. They've either got a partial or a complete. I hand them back all three sections, and no, I'm you, done? You hand them two sections. Okay. And you keep the third one yourself. I keep the That's third one. The counselor record okay. portion you would keep. And then they need to get their scout master to sign off on them. Yep. And How many times has he done this and he doesn't know he keeps one? He knows. So. <laughs> okay. I'll play along with that one. So they take it back and then their uh, scout master, advancement chairman. advancement chairman, or whatever takes care of it. So then it's no longer a matter of you having to record everything in a database mm. and blah, blah, blah. It all goes through the regular channels. Correct. It's awesome. Yep. yep. Awesome. And a little tip from a now going to be a second year professor is. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just makes me laugh. Go ahead. Yes, professor. Makes me laugh, too. All right. Um, when If you're going to teach, if there's anybody out there um, who's going to be a newbie, I don't know if we do have any. Yes, we do. Okay. If you're watching, um, first, you need to take attendance. And the first thing you need to do is make sure that they have their worksheets with them. And on their worksheets, they need to put their names on it. And what, what I said was, I'm taking your worksheets. Because the kids were coming in late. I didn't have time to look through them and check them off. Um, and especially this year, it's going to be back-to-back -back weeks. You're going to need to take those sheets home and go through them and look and see what they've done and what they haven't done. Um, scout by scout by scout. And then send them an email and say, you need to come with a separate sheet of paper with this requirement, that requirement. I thought you stood at the top of the stairs with the stack of them and threw them down the stairs and whoever got to the bottom was a, an A and whoever stayed at the top got an F. It's the way the college professors grade. I thought they weighed them. You never heard that? No, I never heard that. I never heard that. Obviously, you're not a real professor then. No, I am, I am a phony professor, but I am a real chef. Mm -hmm. Chef? Boy Hardy. Hardy. That's right. Go out to our YouTube page at Troop Resource and look at his cooking show on cooking chicken cutlets. 
Much better than Greg Sloanikers. Oof. By the way... If Greg was you, a guest on that show. If you if you see a phone number, 8553, pop up, don't yeah. answer it. Don't answer don't it. Answer you, it. Okay. you have a phone call? Um, not yet, okay. but I think he's texting somebody to call to let him know that we've razzed him. <laughs> what? What? No, he he was definitely was watching. <laughs> oh, you were. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Barry. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> awesome. So uh, we're close to our bewitching half hour. Uh, anything else, final words you'd like to say or news you'd like to impart? Wisdom that, that our dear Randall can impart on us. Sure. <clears throat> Sometimes in life, you got to do the difficult thing, even though you know it's going to hurt. You know it's going to hurt, it's the right thing to do, and you do it, even though it hurts. I think... And actually... Dumbledore said it better. Actually, the stupid thing, it's the exact same thing, and that's why life is tough. I think Dumbledore said, sometimes you have to choose... What is right or what is easy? Right? Prospective counselors and volunteers. There is a carrot. If you volunteer to teach a badge, I will provide you with a link where you will be able to register your son or daughter one week early. This so, is important. So they will be registered and get first crack at picking the badges they want. That's right, because when it sells out, the badges sell out fast as well. So sometimes you can't get your first choice. So that's really a nice perk for coming in and teaching a badge. Mm -hmm. And parents, your scouts are going to be taught by uh, merit badge counselors who, um, this is their vocation. This may be their what they do for a living. This may be their hobby. You're going to be taught, your scouts are going to be taught by some great people who really care, and they're going to get a wonderful experience at a Murray Patch College. Yeah, my and, and then there's me. <laughs> my experience is that the Merit Patch counselors are experts of some sort, and they're usually passionate about what they're doing. And during my downtime, at these things, I will often go in and sit in on one of these merit badges with the permission of the counselor, and they're great. They're absolutely awesome. So this is going to be a great, great program for all the scouts. Wonderful opportunity for our scouts, and I can't wait to see how many scouts PSA females we have at the college. I think <laughs> this is going to be very exciting. It is. All right. Absolutely. That said, thank you, everybody, for thank attending. You. Remember that we host our show the second Wednesday of every month, September through June at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And about a week after the show, we have uh, the um, recorded version posted on our archives, which is out on our YouTube page, also called Troop Resource. So that said, thanks everybody. Good night. And we are looking for sponsors, so if you want to put your ad up, Contact Scott. Awesome. Nice plug. Good night, everyone. Good night.